Hello people, today I'm going to be touching the delicate subject of homosexuality and Jamaica, or I should say homosexuality and Jamaicans. Homophobia in Jamaica, facts or fiction, that is the title of my vlog today. It's a very delicate subject when it comes to Jamaica and it's one of those subjects that most people will try their very best to avoid. But I decided to jump on this subject because um, of the recent um, boogering laws that's being challenged in the Caribbean at the moment. Um, from my understanding, Trinidad has rid it from their constitution and where Jamaica is concerned, the boogering law is being questioned at uh, the Supreme Court at the moment and somewhere in the future a decision will be made. Now, I'm going to tell you the laws in regards to homosexuality in Jamaica, the culture towards homosexuality in Jamaica, um, the views from the people, and I'm even going to touch some religious sides of it, and then somewhere in the middle there I'm going to put my own opinion and views as to the Jamaican culture, the laws, the religious views, and the people. So before most Jamaicans get on my case, let me put a little disclaimer and say, don't shoot the messenger because you don't like the message. I don't make the rules. What I'm about to say are facts. And they're facts that I can prove and they're facts that if you give it an honest consideration, you will agree. So let's get into it. It is reputed that Jamaica is one of the most homophobic society on planet Earth. But is that really true? Not necessarily true. You see, let me get technical with the term homophobic, you know, or any phobia. Phobia, it means having fear and going to extreme measures to avoid. So I'm going to say, if I'm going to get technical with the terminology of the word where homophobia is concerned, it doesn't really apply to Jamaica because I don't know any Jamaicans that are literally afraid of homosexuals or go to any great extreme to avoid them. So, knock that one out of the box. Jamaican has a repetition to be anti-homosexual. Um, but I'm gonna get into, let, let's, let me touch the legal standpoint, first of all. Jamaica was a part of Britain. And when Jamaica got their independence, the British laws remained as governing laws of Jamaica and in those British laws was the Boogerin law and the Boogerin law is pretty much saying it is illegal it is against the law it is against constitution for two men and or two women to have sexual relations that's the law I didn't write the laws I have nothing to do with it the law says it. Until the law is eradicated, it has to remain the law of the land. So for Jamaicans who want to be anti-gay in respect of the law, gays in Jamaica or gays worldwide, you have to actually respect the fact that they are being law-abiding citizens, so to speak. And where the churches are concerned, or where Christians in Jamaica are concerned, Christians have it to say, the Bible says, um, it is abomination. I believe it is in Leviticus somewhere that says, if a man should lay with a man as he would lay with a woman, it is abomination. On the contrary, um, you know, like, like, like most things, uh, I'm Jamaican. I was born in Jamaica. I've seen the resentment towards people who are suspected to be homosexuals. To be honest, I can't actually say I know anyone that are homosexual. You know, while I was growing up in Jamaica, I've seen some treatments towards people 
who had female tendencies or act like girls and Jamaicans would take that and say you're gay and sometimes that could lead to mobbing that could lead to uh, being jumped by a thousand hundreds of people and sometimes seriously injured and in some cases even dead however when it comes to lesbian it's kind of a different story you know um jamaicans they would bark with i would say half a bite you know bark without bite in this scenario would mean um talk a lot of resentment but don't really act but in this case i said bark with half a bite because um jamaicans are hypocrites when it comes to um homosexual male and homosexual woman i know a lot of incidents where men suspected to be gay has been beaten or beaten to death and women were successful or are suspected to be gay um nothing really comes out of it you know maybe a few little blurts but that's pretty much it okay so the law of jamaica at the moment as it stands ruled being homosexual male to be illegal nowhere in the constitution that says homosexual female is illegal likewise in the bible um the bible makes it clear that it is against men laying with men but it's kind of unclear about women laying with women but let me not get into all that because like i say i didn't write the rules um a bunch of british people sat down and wrote the constitution hundreds of years ago and some guy um i believe king james wrote the bible and this is his version of the bible you see I, like most Jamaican kids, were in full respect of the Bible until I kind of got older and understood that it was just a man like myself, you know, narrated his version of the Bible. Then I started to have a few little doubts in parts of the Bible, you know. Um, not 100%, but parts of the Bible. Let's stay with it anyway. When it comes to being anti-gay in Jamaica, it is the most hypocritical stance in the whole country of Jamaica and that's my view when it comes to to being anti-gay you see the thing is if you listen to a lot of Jamaican music you know that have anti-gay lyrics and violence towards homosexuals that is a part of the Jamaican culture I understand if they travel to England Canada or America those lyrics are considered against the constitution, against human rights, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, on a legal standpoint, you can see where those lyrics not only can be condoned in Jamaica, but are not so much in violation of any real law. Good freedom of speech, plus the law says boogering is illegal. So I understand that part of it, you understand? But here's the hypocritical standpoint. You see, from my understanding of Jamaica, from me growing up in Jamaica, anti-gay, it only applies to half the society. You see, if you are suspected, you don't even have to be caught in the act of being an homosexual in the lower class of Jamaica. Just being suspected that you're gay is enough for you to get beaten by the local citizen and in some cases killed. And as you know, nothing will come out of it because Jamaica is a corrupt society. Here's the hypocritical part. Take it uptown or take it to the upper class society where people are openly gay. Jamaicans who know that they're gay. Jamaicans who have even been made past that by these people. Nothing will happen because what? These people are for, of the upper class and these people have money or these people can do you a favor. I mean, I won't get too political in it, you know, but I have to use this one as an example. Like I just say, in the hood in Jamaica, if you're suspected to be gay, you are risking your life. But uptown, it's different. I mean, a few years ago, Jamaica had an unmarried prime minister. And it was rumored high in Jamaica, rumored. The rumor was stink in Jamaica 
that this prime minister is suspected to be gay. No one knew for a fact, but it was rumored that he's suspected to be gay based on the fact that he was unmarried. And he served his term or served his terms. Nothing comes out of it and it works the same way. You see, if you're going to be anti-gay, you cannot be prejudiced. You cannot have a bias. If you're going to be against homosexual, you have to be against homosexual on all spectrum of homosexuality. You can't despise a poor person because he's a homosexual and embrace a rich person even though he's an homosexual. You know, it's just foolishness. It's just mockery. It's just ridiculous. It shows that where Jamaica and homophobia is concerned, I want so much buy into it. I mean, Jamaica is a society that is known not to be among the most intellectual societies of the world. And examples over the years has proven that. I mean, this is the same society that a couple of years ago used to kill each other. Friends used to kill friends, family used to kill family because one voted for JLP and the other voted for PNP. I mean, the citizens of Jamaica for a long time were just a puppet and a string. I mean, I remember one incident um, many years ago when the gas prices spiked and um, riots and roadblocks and everything was going on around the world and I remember watching one news report in Jamaica and a girl was interviewed and the news reporter asked her what was her purpose of rioting and she said she had no clue she woke up everybody else was out on the street rioting so she just jumped in and riot you see that is a prime example of the Jamaican people. That's a prime example of the Jamaican behavior. Ask a lot of people today, why are you a JLP supporter? They'll tell you because the neighborhood that I live in is JLP or my mother or my father or my brother and them used to vote for JLP so I vote for JLP. Likewise for PNP it's the same reason. Most of the people who support these party does not have an intellectual reason, does not have even a personal reason as to why they believe this party will benefit the country, or this party will benefit them. It's more of a follow the leader. And that goes straight to homosexuality. A lot of people in Jamaica who are against homosexuality, they don't really have a reason. You understand? They don't really have a personal reason. The society is against homosexuals, so we just join in, but we've never really given it thought. I, for one, have been guilty of that because when I was growing up in Jamaica, I was 100% against homosexuality. Why? I was taught to be against homosexuality. However, when I moved away and I started to evolve into my own person and I took on writing which required a lot of research I learned a lot of things about homosexuality you see one of my reasons to be against homosexuality in the first place wasn't because I'm Jamaican or wasn't because the society um, was against or my society was against homosexuality one of my reason was I used to believe that homosexuality was an actual choice. I thought this guy kind of chose to be gay rather than be straight. And I thought, no, I would definitely be against that because from a man's standpoint, nothing's better than a woman's love. But after I got older and I start doing researches and learning things, I realized that the answer to homosexuality and the truth about homosexuality was in my face all along. And when I say that, I meant that when I was about eight, nine years old and I used to go to school, I remember two boys that was up in my classroom. We were the same age. We were kids. We didn't know anything about sex or anything about um, you know, reproduction or nothing like that. We have innocent kids. And I remember these two boys that they were just very feminine, you know, eight, nine years old. We kind of narrowed it down that they were just sissies. They rather to play with the girls than with the boys. They rather to dress and play with their faces and do everything and grow their nails. And it was only like 10, 20 years later 
that I realized that my classmates, as young as they were, as innocent as they were, they were gay. They were born that way. Just like how we were born black, or we were born uh, to be fat, or we were born to be skinny, or we were born with black hair or brown eyes, and we can't really change those natural traits. That's what my life led for me to realize about homosexuality. I can't make the call to say I was born black because I was sinned. All right, so I can't make the call to say somebody was born gay because they were sinned. The, the thing I'm just saying is I learned to accept that I'm black, I'm tall, another person is white and maybe short, and some people are gay. You see, the hypocrisy about Jamaicans and homosexuality goes like this. If you are anti-gay, most Jamaicans, you would not live in England, you would not live in Canada, you would not live in the United States of America. Why? Because these are countries that sometimes the guy who gives you your paycheck is openly gay. Sometimes the guy that works next to you is openly gay. And there's nothing you can do about it because you are in their country. And in their country, it is okay to be who you are. It's okay to be gay. Now, if you're anti-gay, despise gay, will not buy into the notion of people being gay, it's a job that you wouldn't keep. It's someone you would not associate it with. It's a country you would divorce yourself from. You would not stay in it. You would not deal with it because it's against everything that you believe in. So that's where I believe hypocrisy comes in where Jamaica and homophobia is concerned. It's my take to say Jamaica is not necessarily homophobic. There's a great number of people in Jamaica that are anti-gay, which are without reasons. Um, but the reality is they are. The law as it stands is boogering is illegal. And it is illegal for a man to have sexual intercourse or sexual relations with another man according to the law. And the churches, from my understanding, churches has to abide with the law of the land. And if the law of the land says it's um, against homosexuals, then the church has to follow suit. I don't know if most of Jamaican churches follow suit because it's the law of the land, because it's kind of like on the fence at the moment that the Bulgarian law has been so old and dusted and society has been changed over the years and it is likely that the rule be thrown out. I personally don't believe anyone should be persecuted for their sexual orientation. Um, you know, I, I've lived abroad and I've faced racism. I've experienced prejudice. So I do understand what it's like to be hated or to be despised because you are different, you know? so. Uh, I'm not here to condone homosexuality and I'm not here to um, despise homosexuality. What I'm trying to say is that I've got a fresh new point of view towards homosexuality within the last 10, 20 years of my life. And um, I do feel for homosexuality who are persecuted illegally. When I say persecuted illegally, keep in mind that homosexuality is illegal according to the Jamaican law. So if someone, let's say someone caught um, two males in the act of homosexuality, I feel for them that street justice is what they usually have to deal with rather than being arrested, taken to jail and go through the, the judicial procedure. So that's what I meant by that. But anyway, that's my two piece today on um, Jamaica homophobia or Jamaica anti-gay. Each one teach one, I'm just sharing my point of view. And at the same time, like I always say, feel free to make your comment positive or negative, bring it, you know, this channel is here to create a conversational platform. Um, and you could teach me something, you could open my eyes to something as much as I could open your eyes to something. And I wanna say big respect to all my subscribers that I've subscribed to the channel and I will continue to try my earnest best to bring more interesting topic to the channel. Until next time, peace.